I, um, I do the program with uh, Dr. Stephen Krieger, my colleague in New York City. And as I mentioned, my name is Dr. Aliza Ben Zachariah. And we talk about um, clinical neuroanatomy as it pertains to neurology, but we try to make the focus on multiple sclerosis since that's our um, target focus and that's the patients that we treat. Um, and we try always to think about how to make localization easier because I think the, the, the importance of, of localization is that it, it gives you an indication for etiology, what is the cause for the signs and symptoms that your patient presents. And then it also gives you some thoughts about what tests to choose. Once you localize it to the brain on the spinal cord, you know that you need perhaps magnetic resonant imaging for the brain and the C and the T spine based on the signs and symptoms of patient that presents. And you manage better. Um, and I think in addition, lastly, um, it helps you provide people some prognostic indications, although not always we can give good prognosis. Um, it, it helps when you localize. And I think we need to remember that often we think one lesion can explain, can explain all the signs and symptoms the patient comes to us, but it can be two lesions. It could be two different localizations that uh, explain and, and describe what the patient tell us and, and provide us their stories. And I think the clinical pearls, there are a few. We always, I always try to teach um, students about um, shortcuts. How can you like get some shortcuts and, and go to the point? And so, for example, if someone tells you that they have sensory deficits like paresthesia, numbness, pins, needles, um, you know that you can rule out muscle disease and you know that you can rule out any, any disorders of the neuromuscular uh, junction. If someone comes from, uh, for example, for visual changes, you know, okay, so if it's just visual acuity, I can definitely localize it above, above the, brain, the brainstem. But if someone comes with double vision, double vision, INO, um, you know that, that you're thinking about brainstem, the different level of the brainstem. So it's helpful along with facial. So facial can be often we think as, as neurologists, as clinicians, uh, we think about uh, contralateral and ipsilateral. So when you have a, um, an injury and a lesion in the brainstem, you'll have ipsilateral, same side, loss of sensation or weakness. And if it comes from above the brainstem in the brain, in the parenchyma of the brain, which is huge as opposed to the brainstem, you, you, you have contralateral facial deficits. So it helps you in a way when you think about the symptoms and, and then you go back to the brain and think about the pathways and think, so okay, what am I dealing with here? Uh, so it gives you a, an idea what tests to do if you need to consult with a neuro-ophthalmologist, if you need to do OCT, if someone have visual field cut, maybe it, it's, 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 it's definitely localized to a different area. So, so I think it, it just um, it, it helps you do that. If someone has a binocular uh, visual cut, you know that your, the lesion has to be around the chiasm. So, uh, so I think it, it's localization is so important in, in, in neurology and it's, it's something that's not changed but we learn to explain it better and describe it better because those are the things that do not evolve over time. It's the, the basic thing that we know about the anatomy of the brain and the spinal cord but I think we learn to, to address it better and to take the important pieces of every, every point and try to, to fit it to a clinical presentation and, and that's the the beauty and the fascination that I have, you know, when a patient comes in and they, you talk to them and they tell you, oh, my, I can't move my food. So you're trying to think, okay, it's the lower extremity. So let me think, is it probably the spinal cord, which usually when you have a spinal cord lesion, you have bilateral symptoms. When it's the brain, it's usually unilateral. So it's one-sided symptoms. So I think it's intriguing when, you, when people come to you and tell you, and then you try to think, what test should I do? And what the diagnosis, is it MS or not? Because it's so much help you when you do the localization, also distinguish MS between MS and other neurological disease, or if someone has an attack or a pseudo attack, or if someone has a physiological change or psychological change. So, so those things, does it make sense when patient comes and tell you about this, this, and this, and this? Often patient will 
they don't know the neurological book, so they just tell you what they have. And sometimes it's so vague that it's sometimes hard to pinpoint. Um, but I, I think it's important to listen to patients, get the focal, diffuse symptoms, and, and make sense out of it, and ask them about onset of time, uh, because you want to make sure that you can localize it and, and not order. Usually we do order brain and, and cervical and thoracic spine. Many of the experts said that they do often thoracic, even though people do not have any bowel bladder symptoms or such to explain the need. But I think people like at baseline to do all tests and then go from there. But if you want to refine your tests and people perhaps do not have uh, it's costly for them or they do not have insurance, you should probably just target the brain and the C-spine or whatever is based on their presentation. You want to feed the test. I think I've learned something very important. Don't do tests that maybe are not needed because sometimes you don't know what to do with them. But again, MRI are critical and they are one of the best ancillary tests in MS. So they help us. So I think I, I often do a new patient, I do all three the brain and the C and the T. But it's good to at least, once you have the story of patients, to localize and think, does it fit the diagnosis of MS? It's a, it's a young female. You think about the epidemiological characteristics too, but when you try to localize, you want to really make sure that you got all the signs and symptoms, and then you think about it and you say, okay, it fits one lesion, that's it. It's the spinal cord, it's the upper cord, that's what it is when people tell you, for example, about their meat. Uh, you know it's in the dorsal column. So there's certain symptoms that give us a quick localization, and some symptoms that you try to think about, especially if it comes from more than uh, one lesions.